In the previous videos, we discussed a few technical details, architecture decisions, desi design points of Apache Hadoop Ozone, but there are a few questions which can be interesting only for developers. So I'm just starting a few new videos where the target audience is the group of developers or contributors. So if you can see some red line in the first slide, uh, it means that the target audience is the developer. So it's something which can be useful for contributors. And as with the normal videos, when we started from a very high level overview, here we should start with understanding what's in the GitHub Ozone repository. So let's understand what we have in the repository. As we discussed earlier, we have two independent layers, or not totally independent, two separated layers. One is the Hadoop distributed data storage, which is the block space management. It's nothing more just replicating huge binary blobs. And here we have a primary server, which is the storage container manager and a few data nodes. And on top of it, we provide an object store semantics. And the also manager is the primary server there, which can assign any kind of keys to specific bl binary blobs or blocks, which are replicated by the low level layer. And on top of it, we have a few other projects. So this is the overview and this is the typical client workflow. The client connects to one of the primary servers which can communicate with, uh, with the other one and we have the data nodes and we have separated projects for, for the separated services like the web UI or the S3 interface. And uh, if we check check out the Git repository, we have two main directories, the Ozone and the HDDS for the two layers. And based on the original idea, they can be released in a separated way. But today we are just releasing together and we are using exactly the same value for the versions, but that was the original idea to separate the two levels to two subdirectories. So let's check what's inside the subdirectories and let's start with the block level. So we have a, a few projects. So similar to any, any server side application, we have just, we need a client, right? So this is the HDDS side. This is an Ozone site. Let's start with the HDDS. We have a client and um, we have server. In this case, this is server SCM, storage container manager. This is the primary server. This is the client. And we need to share some code between them, which is the common. So if a library a protocol definition is shared between the server and the client, it should be, should be moved to the common project. But we also have data nodes actually for, these are data nodes. The name of the project is container service for some technical reasons, service mainly for packaging reason. So the container service is the data node and we have the primary node. So we need some method to share code between them. And this is the framework sub project, framework. So this is the framework and it can, the server SCM can depend on framework. And obviously we need the common here as well, because that's what, the common is shared between the client and server. So this is something what we have on the HDDS uh, side. We have something uh, which is common, but if, it's, if, if the scope is very well defined, we can just move it out. For example, the configuration loading interface, it's a separated project, a very lightweight project. It's very similar to the common, but it's easier to maintain in a separated project to be sure that the dependencies are minimal. So this is what we have, client, common, this is shared between the client and server, config, 
which is just the simple part of the common. Container service is the data node. Dev support is just helper script. Documentation sh should be shared between all of the services because the documentation itself is available on the running services. So there is a specific slash docs endpoint and you can just read the actual documentation. This is why it's in the low level layer. We have the framework, which is the common between the servers. And we have this Hadoop dependency client and server and test. These are just helper projects. It's, they are almost empty. And the main idea that when we have a Hadoop dependency, for example, for the server side, Hadoop, the dependencies of the, or the class pass of the Hadoop projects usually are full with a lot of unnecessary dependencies to make it easier to use and just use the absolute minimal dependency. We have this technical project which depends on the Hadoop itself and it uses a lot of exclude rules here. So that's all and we have a, a similar for the client. And it's nothing more just a collection of the exclude rules. So there are no Java code, for example. So if I check the server, Hadoop HDDS, Hadoop dependency server, there is a POM XML and it's nothing more, okay. It's nothing more just a lot of exclude rules. You can see that Hadoop common, we need Hadoop common, but we don't need Zookeeper, for example, or Jackson or, or any other things. Okay, what do we have? Interfaces. Yes, so the interfaces or the protocol buffer definitions are usually shared with the common. But there are two types of interfaces. One is which required by the client and the client uses it to connect to the server. There is an other interface which means that between the servers, the server need to communicate with the other one. And there are different contracts for that. This should be the client should be backward compatible all of the time. Here we can accept some kind of changes. And there are third type of communication, which means that the administrator, for example, recon or with any CLI can connect to the server. It's more like the client, not between the servers, but there are different rules. So all of these protobuf files are, are in interfaces are defined here just to make it easier to to follow the changes or check what uh, what are the changes between different releases so server scm this is the primary server test utils is just for unit test and shared between multiple projects tools tools is the tools contain the all of the cli so this is similar to the client but it connects to the server and can do administration administ any administrator command and yeah something like this so it has different compatibility rules so that's what we have in the hdds and we have hadoop ozone with a few other projects so let's go to the ozone and in this case we can use a different color for example so in ozone we have exactly the same structure we have a client we have a ozone manager which is the primary server and obviously the ozone manager would like to connect to the server scm so and this is a server side so on servers because this is a server side we need all of the server side libraries we need the, the common from here for example but it seems to be easier just introduce an other command here and this common can depend on the other common because if something is used in the lower level layer in the higher level layer we we need it as well so and because we already have this framework which is shared between all of the server side components then then we are fine and that's what we have we can also have some kind of tools uh, there is the CSI, CSI this is the container storage interface and additional independent service we have the data node this is nothing more just the packaging of the container service that's the reason why it's container service here okay dev support fault injection test it's a, it's a very specific type of test to try to break the ozone inside is a very specific part of the 
of the tools, the CLI interfaces, there is a separated video if you are interested about the internals and monitoring ozone then then you can check that one integration test is nothing more just a lot of unit tests but not traditional unit test here we are starting real servers that's the reason why we call it integration test and we have the similar interfaces as here that all of the client interfaces are separated to a project just to be sure that it's backward compatible native client is a c client it's under development and hopefully it will provide a fuse interface very soon we have also file system we will check it uh, very soon this is the other server the recon is the web ui and prediction server some of the code for SQL are generated, S3 gateway, again, this is the REST interface, and we have tools for the CLI tools, and this is not used yet. This is for the in-place upgrade, but it's not yet implemented, it is just planned. So that's what we heard, that we have in the Ozone side, the only remaining part is the Ozone 5 system, which is the implementation of the Hadoop compatible, uh, Hadoop compatible file system and yeah that's also a little bit tricky we need multiple projects for that and first of all we have two different implementation or actually the implementation is the same but we support Hadoop 2 and Hadoop 3 so we have Ozone file system Hadoop 2 and Hadoop 3 just to support both Hadoop 2, 2 and 3 and you can imagine that most of the code are common so we have something which is the OzoneFS common here which is shared but to make it easier to run Ozone client which is based on the Hadoop 3 code we shading the new network protocol so and it's easier to do the shading only once so we have the shading code common and they can be reused by the two different uh, packaging project and the, all of the codes should be in the common and there is another one we saw this is a shaded for Hadoop through this is a shaded for Hadoop 2 and we have an ozone shell command for all of the CLI tools when you can have everything on the class bus you don't need to shade this is the ozone file system and it depends on the common code as well so this can be used by the CLI, for example, for the Ozone CLI. So something like this, this is the structure of the Ozone uh, file system part. One, two, three, four, legacy and current. You might see it in the, in the repository in a release, but they are removed and replaced by the Hadoop 2 and Hadoop 3. So if you check out the latest version, you won't see them because the legacy is something like the Hadoop 2 and the current is something like the Hadoop 3 but technically it's uh, slightly different. So these are the projects what we have in Apache Hadoop Ozone and next time we can go forward and check how can we use it and how can we start the development.